my online class. By the way, I am Ike Sadonis, your virtual teacher for today. And in today's learning episode, I will share to you the contents of basic calculus. Yes, you hear it right, basic calculus. So in this course, we will talk about the basics or the fundamentals of calculus. So don't worry class because basic calculus is not as difficult as you think. And in this video, I will give you the contents and the learning competencies that you should study in advance in order for you to pass this course. So better finish this video. But before we start, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button below and also please hit the notification bell so that you will always be updated for my next video. So, basic calculus. What is basic calculus? Basic calculus is one of the specialized subjects in STEM strand and senior high school and it is being offered every second semester of the year. So, if you are a grade 11 student, this video is perfect for you. I nailed it. So, please finish this video because I assure you that you will pass the exam because of the learning competencies and contents that I will give here in this video. Okay, so let's start. So to give you the objective of the course Basic Calculus, at the end of the course, the students must know how to determine the limit of a function, differentiate and integrate algebraic, exponential, logarithmic, and trigonometric functions in one variable and to formulate and solve problems involving continuity, extreme values, related rates, population models, and areas of plane regions. And to give you a summary of the content of basic calculus, the contents are limits and continuity, derivatives, and integration. And let's start with the first content, limits and continuity. So the learning competencies of limits and continuity are as follows. So you can take a screenshot of this learning competencies if you want, but you can also search it in Google because this is also available. Okay, so these are the learning competencies, but let's discuss it or have it one by one. So let's start with the first learning competency. So the first learning competency is the learners illustrate the limit of a function using table of values and graph of the function. So you are going to illustrate the limit of a function using table of values and graph of function. So what you see here in the left part is the table of values and at the right part is the graph of a function. So these are the table of values and these are the graph of the function. And you are also going to find the limit of the function by simply looking at this table of values and graph of a function. Okay, next. Distinguish between the limit of f of x as x approaching c and f of c. So, what is the difference between f of x as x approaches c and f of c? So, this limit of f of x as x approaching c is the limit of a function while f of c is the limit value. So, is there a difference between the two? So, this is your test. Search for it. Next. So, third competency under limits and continuity. Illustrate the limit loss or the loss of limits. So these are the limit loss. You can also take a screenshot of it. So we have here the sum, difference, constant, product, quotient, power, and root. So these are the limit loss. And you are going to use this limit loss in finding limits of a function. So fourth competency you are also uh, going to apply the limit loss in evaluating limit of algebraic functions such as polynomial, rational, and radical functions. So just as what I tell you, you are going to apply this limit loss in evaluating limit of a function. Four, 
fifth, by the way, you are also going to compute the limits of exponential, logarithmic, and trigonometric functions using table of values and graphs of functions. By the way, these exponential, logarithmic, and trigonometric functions are transcendental functions. And of course, also, you are also going to evaluate the limits involving expression. The expression sine t over t, 1 minus cosine t over t, and e to the t minus 1 over t. So these are special limits using table of values. Seventh, you are also going to illustrate continuity of a function at a number. So you are going to tell whether the function is continuous at a number or not. So here in number 8, you are going to determine whether a function is a continuous function at a number or not. So we have here two graphs, graph A and graph B. So which graph is continuous at a number? So our number here is x is equal to 1. So which graph is continuous at x is equal to 1? What do you think? Is it graph A or is it graph B? Okay, so the correct answer is graph A. So this function f of x equals 3x minus 1 is continuous at x is equal to 1. While the function g of x in graph B is discontinuous at x is equal to 1. Why? What's the reason? This is because of the point x equal to 1 or at x is equal to 1. At graph A, you can see that the point here is a solid point while at graph B, you can see here a hollow circle or an open circle. This mean, it means that x is equal to 1 is not included in this graph. So, graph A is a continuous function or f of x is a continuous function. Ninth, competency. Illustrate continuity of a function on an interval. So if there is a continuity of a function at a number a or at a number c, there is also continuity of a function on an interval. So in this competency in number 9, you are going to illustrate continuity of a function on an interval. And on number 10, again, you are going to determine whether a function is continuous on an interval or not. So let's have this graph. Take a look at this graph. So I have here a question. Is f of x continuous at negative 1, 1? So what do you think? Is this function f of x continuous at negative 1, 1? No. This function is not continuous. Because from negative 1 to 1, 0 is not included. So the function f of x is discontinuous at x is equal to 0 or not continuous at x is equal to 0. How about this one? Is f of x continuous at 1, 2? So is f of x continuous at 1, 2? Yes. So these are solid lines. So f of x is continuous at 1, 2. Eleventh competency under limits and continuity. Illustrate different types of discontinuity such as whole or removable, jump or essential, asymptotic or infinite. So just like in the previous example, you see there an open circle or a hole that is type of discontinuity. Twelve competency. Illustrate the intermediate value and extreme value theorems. So these are the IVT and the EVT. The intermediate value theorem and the extreme value theorem. So please study this because this is very important in basic calculus. Thirteen, 
solve problems involving continuity of a function. Of course, in every lesson, there is a solving problem in order for teachers and for you to assess whether you really apply or you really can apply the topics that you learn in real life. So, there is solving problems. Okay, so we are done in the first content limits and continuity let's move to the second content which is derivatives so these are the learning competencies of derivatives again you can post this video and take a screenshot of this and later on we will proceed okay so i think you are done Okay, so what are the competencies under the content derivatives? By the way, derivative is also known as differentiation. So first learning competency, you as a student or as a learner must illustrate the tangent line to the graph of a function at a given point. So take a look at this graph. This curve is the function and then this red line is the tangent line. Remember that a tangent line is a line that passes the function at exactly one point. Otherwise, if it is more than one point, it is a second line. Next, you as a student must apply the definition of derivative of a function at a given number. By the way, what is the definition of derivative and what is a derivative? So, here, I have here a definition of derivative. The derivative of a function f of x with respect to x is the function f prime of x. So, this is read as f prime of x. And is defined as f prime of x is equal to the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h approaches 0. So your function here is f of x and the derivative of the function is f prime of x. Next competency, you as a learner must relate the derivative of a function to the slope of the tangent line. Another, you should determine the relationship between differentiability and continuity of a function. By the way, do you think there is a relationship between differentiability and continuity of a function? What do you think? Yes, of course, they have relationship. And take note of this. All differentiable functions are continuous, but not all continuous functions are differentiable. So whenever you find a differentiable function, you can already say that that differentiable function or that function is continuous. But not all continuous functions are differentiable. So please take note of this. Another competency, the learners or you must derive the differentiation rules. So these are the differentiation rules. We have here the constant rule the power rule, the product rule, quotient rule, and the chain rule. Don't worry because in our next video, we will discuss these rules of differentiation because this is very important in the topic derivatives. Six, of course, what is the loss of differentiation for? You are going to apply the differentiation rules in computing the derivative on an algebraic, exponential, and trigonometric functions. Also, you are going to solve optimization problems. Compute higher order derivatives of functions. So what do we mean by higher order derivatives of functions? Remember that the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. So when we say higher order derivatives, we have f prime prime of x, f prime 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 of x, and so on. So that are examples of higher derivatives. Or we get the derivative of a function 
uh, many times, not only ones that are higher order derivatives. Let's say, for example, I have a function f of x. If I get the derivative of the function f of x, the result is f prime of x. But if I am still going to get the derivative of f prime of x, I will still get f prime prime of x. So that's it. Higher order derivatives of function. 9. The learners must illustrate the chain rule of differentiation. So this is the chain rule of differentiation. And of course, you are going to solve problems using this chain rule. And for the 11th competency, the learners must illustrate the implicit differentiation. So what is implicit differentiation? In implicit differentiation, we differentiate each side of an equation with two variables, usually x and y. So by treating one of the variables as a function of the other. So this calls for using the chain rule. So that is implicit differentiation. For some students, this is a little um, difficult, but if you will study and read more about implicit differentiation, I know you can get it easy. Okay, so the 12th competency, the learners or you must solve problems including logarithmic and inverse trigonometric functions using implicit differentiation. And the last one, you are going to solve situational problems involving related rates. So we are done with the limits and continuity and derivatives. Now let's move to integration. By the way, before I proceed to integration, let me share to you that derivatives and integrations are opposites. In derivatives or differentiation, you are given a function f of x and you get the derivatives f prime of x. But in integration, this is the opposite of derivatives. You are given a derived function, f prime of x, and your goal is to get the original function, f of x. So that is integration or also called as anti-differentiation. So anti of the derivatives, anti-differentiation or integration. So what are the learning competencies under the content integration? So these are the learning competencies. Again, you can post the video and take a screenshot of it. And let's move forward to the first competency of this content. So the learners must illustrate the antiderivative of a function. So what are the antiderivative of a function? These are the rules for integrals or integration. We have here the power rule, exponential, constant multiples, absolute values, sum and difference, and of course, the rules for trigonometric functions. Second, the learners must compute the general antiderivative of polynomial, radical, exponential, and trigonometric functions. And also, you are going to compute the antiderivative of a function using substitution rule and table of integrals, including those two antiderivatives involve logarithmic and inverse trigonometric functions. So more on application and computational using the loss of integration or the integration rule. So better memorize and familiarize those rules, theorems, or laws because that will guide you in this course. You are going to apply those. So start memorizing those or familiarizing so that you will take calculus easy and at ease. Okay, fourth. You, as a student, must solve separable differential, differential equations using anti-differentiation or anti-derivatives. And you must also solve situational problems involving exponential growth and decay, bounded growth, and logistic growth. 
And for the sixth competency, you as a student must approximate the area of region under a curve using Riemann sums. Left, right, and then midpoint. By the way, if we have a polygon, it is easy for us to get the area of that polygon, right? But here in calculus, you are going to get the area of a curve. So, we will use integration to approximate the area of that curve as shown in this picture. Seventh, you are going to define the definite integral as the limit of the Riemann sums. By the way, when we say definite, we are talking about exact value. So, in integration, we have indefinite integral and we also have definite integral. When we say indefinite integral, we are not pertaining to exact value. That's why we have here plus C. While indefinite integral, we have upper limits and lower limits so that we have a definite or exact value. So, you can learn that as we go through the topic in this basic calculus or as you read about basic calculus. Eight, the learners must illustrate the fundamental theorem of calculus. We have here the first fundamental theorem of calculus and the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So please study this one, this fundamental theorems because this is very important in basic calculus. Eight, you as a learner must compute the definite integral of a function using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that is what I tell you or I told you. You are going to compute the definite integral. Then, illustrate the substitution rules. Eleven, compute the definite integral of a function using substitution rule. And twelve, Compute the area of a plane region using the de definite integral. So here, we can compute the area of a plane region using definite integral. And 13th, lastly, you are going to solve problems involving areas of a plane regions. So that's it. That are all the contents of basic calculus. Basic calculus are evolve to the topics or to the contents limits and continuity derivatives and integration so i just want to share to you class before i end this video this saying don't study hard instead study smart by studying in advance so after you watch this video start reading about basic calculus and before you get out of this video Please don't forget to like this video and click the notification bell and subscribe also so that you will be updated for my next video. Thank you for watching and have a happy learning. Bye!